Um, we are live again here at stage two. Um, quick thank you to all of our huge, huge track sponsors, um, INEE Learn Security, Axonius, MongoDB, Google, we Hack Purple, Bridge Crew, Juniper, and of course, CoreLight. Thank you all. We couldn't do it without you. Um, if you get a chance, stop by the expo and say hello to all of our sponsors. But don't do that yet because you need to stay here for an awesome talk about building your personal brand in information security. And our speaker today is Artie Gadia. Um, I would read the, the bio, but I'm exhausted from looking at the bio. Um, she is a champion in empowering women, and that's one of the most important things I see. Um, she has founded She, which you can see is sharing her empowerment. That's an awesome thing. But she's been working in information and cybersecurity for quite some time. I'm going to stop and let her take over, tell her about, um, tell you all about herself and also about how to build your personal brand in information security. Take it away. Fantastic. Thank you, everyone. I'd like to start off with Jambo, Namaste, Konnichiwa, Bonjour, and greetings to everyone, to all of you around the world. Thank you for joining me today at the Diana Initiative Conference. As you heard, my name is Arti Gadia, and today I'll be talking on the topic, building your personal brand in information security. Over the next 40 minutes, after I introduce myself further, I'll share the challenges individuals face when building your brand. There will be some audience participation. I love audience participation. So definitely looking forward to seeing your participation today. I'll then leverage the concept of the golden circle, which is why, how, and what. If you're not familiar with this concept, there's a great TED talk as Simon Sinek explains it well. This is all about starting with why. Why building your brand is important. I'll then share examples of cybersecurity professionals and how they've been building their brand. And then I'll end it with what you can do through five simple tips. Okay, so a little bit about me and about my safari. Being Kenyan, I have to bring the word safari into my talks. Does the slide uh, move forward? Did it, did it progress? So, yeah, perfect, there we go. There was a bit of a lag. So a bit about my safari, as I mentioned, I'm gonna relate it to how it is as I built my brand. My purpose as a change agent is to be a voice as I've dedicated my entire career to break down barriers and boundaries for underrepresented groups in STEM and in leadership. I'm passionate about changing the status quo to close the gender diversity gap. How I have done this is through Stand Out to Lead, and she that you heard as Kat introduced me earlier on, she which stands for sharing her empowerment. The impact has been 30 women in cybersecurity have already begun their board journey over the last year as a result. And we've also seen a 50% increase within the organization that I work at in hiring individuals identified as women. When I was honored for my contribution in the cybersecurity industry by being named as one of the top 20 women in cybersecurity in Canada, it helped me become a stronger voice. And it inspired me to share my journey in the book, The Rise of the Cyber Women, Volume 2. I currently work for Bug Crowd and recently was appointed as a board member for Observe ID. During my free time, I volunteer on cybersecurity boards, such as Isaka, she leads Tech Vancouver, uh, the local OS uh, chapter in Vancouver, as well as WESIS Western Canada. Outside of work, I enjoy cooking. You'll see my posts about cooking. And as you can see in the picture here, I enjoy riding motorcycles. So let's 
try and understand the challenges and obstacles. Why isn't everyone building their brand? As I began my research about this topic, I went to individuals and most, most individuals say they know the value, but what's stopping them? I asked my friends, I asked family and work colleagues what their challenges or obstacles have been when building their brand. And I received these comments that I'll categorize it into six categories. Not enough time. I haven't thought about it. I'm not sure of the value. Fear of negative criticism. Don't know how to build one and imposter syndrome. In the survey, you can see, I didn't see anyone select the fear of negative criticism. However, just yesterday, I did speak to a founder and for him, he said it was fear of how a negative brand could affect his business, which is his obstacle to, to building his brand. He said that was the fear that was coming in the way for him. I could actually understand and relate to that statement, but we had a deeper conversation. I uh, shared a little bit about this talk. Another interesting point, bringing it back to the fear part, is that according to research, it takes seven seconds to form first impressions. So I read that research and I thought, let me, let me try it out and experiment it. I have an eight-year-old niece, she's uh, staying with me. And I acted three different personas. And in literally in seven seconds, she could tell me which individual she liked best. And if you think about it in a job interview, if the interviewer doesn't know you, right? The first impression is critical because of those seven seconds when I tested it out with my niece, straight away she formed an opinion on, on each of those personas and chose one who she liked the most. It was the same person, me, of course. And you may not be aware, but with every interaction you have with your network, whether this is through a conversation or through social media or through your project work, you're building your personal brand. And in the interview phase, if they knew your brand, whether um, they knew about you through social media or through somebody, whatever the case may be, that could influence how your interview goes. That could influence that seven second opinion. So this is another reason on how fear, where I can relate to and understand how fear can be an obstacle. And again, as you'll see from the survey results in the, in the pie chart here, the top two are not enough time and imposter syndrome. I've heard a lot about imposter syndrome, uh, different speakers talked uh, during this conference and, and how to um, handle it, right? And if you see here, that's about between the two, time and imposter syndrome, that's about 75% in those two categories. The biggest tip that I'd like to share to you all is to recognize your obstacle and to overcome it. I hear the time constraint as a challenge from so many individuals. Hey, I'll raise my hand. I had this excuse a lot and I used it a lot of times until I missed out an opportunity. And that's when it got me to reflect. I'd like to highlight the importance of investing in yourself. And I'll cover more details in the talk as one of the negative consequences and in not investing time in, in yourself or in building your brand could be a missed opportunity. In my journey, other things would always come in the way. I started journaling and through that I realized how much time I spent on things that were not important. That's when I was like, okay, I can remove all these other different things and I can find time to invest in myself. Now, I know getting started is probably the hardest part, which is why I'm gonna help you all. I've created a virtual ex exercise that we'll go through and would love your participation. I don't know about you, but I love swag. So, I have an incentive so that you can participate. If you participate and submit it by the end of this talk, 
I will have a random draw and will send a signed copy of the book and a t-shirt. So t-shirt and a signed copy of the book. By taking the time to participate, my hope is to inspire you. And I promise you that once you start, it will spark your journey. I've included the link to a Google form in the chat, which I will make sure I can do right now. Hopefully you can see it. And so that you can complete it. So in you can see it in the slide. You can see it on the chat. Hopefully you can all see it. And it, of course, I'm going to ask the moderator to repost it if you if it isn't coming through. And I'd like you to open it and fill it as we go along, right? So I'll go through these four questions. Okay, hopefully you should be able to see the form. Yes, I can see it in the chat. Okay, so let's go through these four questions. And I'm gonna help you along the way um, on this. You're investing the next 40 minutes with me. That time constraint is no longer a barrier. So the first question is to write down your why. Think of it as your purpose. It's okay if you haven't thought about your purpose yet. For me, my safari of experiences led me to understand my purpose, as I didn't want anyone else to experience the same roadblocks. So my purpose was to, be, to become a voice or to be a voice became clearer over the years. Connect your purpose to how it will better the world. For example, my purpose is connected to diversity, equity, inclusive, and making this a better environment, making this a better industry. So start thinking about it. I'll give you examples that will help you. And remember, this is about you and your purpose, your why, right? The second one, as you can see, is I'd like you to write what you're passionate about. Then think about how you can achieve your purpose using your passion. As you start writing, you may notice things that you didn't think about. I know when I did this exercise on myself, it got me thinking. And then third, as you can see the third question in the Google form, is to write three adjectives that describe you. For example, just three that come top of mind. For example, tenacious, ambitious, Whatever that you feel that describes you, focused, determined, open-minded, creative, inspiring, reliable, leader. Think of all, think of three, just add three, the first three that come to mind. These are all examples. I went for a leadership course a few years ago and that exercise uh, for me to write was all of us as the attendees was to write the three adjectives and then to reach out to 10 people in, your, in my network to ask them to write three adjectives that describe me. And when I did that exercise, it surprised me. I was so surprised at how I'd reached out to my family, my work colleagues, and friends. And it came back with all similar adjectives that described me. I thought it would be different, but they were actually quite similar between the, the different groups I reached out to. And many of us who struggle with imposter syndrome, this exercise may help you see what you don't see in yourself. And then the last part of the exercise is to think about what you'd like to be known for and connect it back to your purpose. Right? So just th start thinking about it. And like I said, I'm going to help you and inspire you with examples uh, from other um industry, uh, you know, other people or individuals within the industry. So first, let's go with the first example. The first one that's happening today in this pandemic, the two scientists that you see in the picture here, scientists Sahin and Turesi, they're known for their brains behind the world's first effective coronavirus vaccine. Pfizer was the one that reached out and, and uh, work together with these two scientists and their organization. That is their brand. You know, that's what people can relate to them as 
you know, when they think about the Pfizer vaccine. If you read this story, <clears throat> you'll understand that they were not focused on how to be famous or how to make money. They wanted to provide something for society and that was their purpose. And for many years, they shared a passion for cancer research. So hopefully this, as you can see, what their purpose was, what their passion was, right? You saw the impact, which we'll talk a little bit more about, right? The second example, let's look at this example. Everyone knows who they are, the anonymous group. I read an article that shared that the media is at a loss at how to describe them. One thing for sure that is clear is that their purpose is promoting freedom of speech in a way that they won't be able to do it anonymously. They are a leaderless group and how they go about their message is anonymously in a coordinated matter, manner. When you see that mask, immediately you know who they are and that's, their, that's what people can relate to their brand. So back to the golden circle. As I talked earlier on, let's try to understand the value and the importance of building your brand. Why should you take the time to build your brand? Why is it important? And what impact does it have? I loved storytelling. Growing up, I just loved the storytelling. And I'll explain this through interviews with women in our industry. So the first one, as you know, Alyssa, Alyssa Miller, she was the keynote speaker at this conference yesterday. Great keynote. She's currently a BISO, Business Information Security Officer for SMP Global Ratings. I reached out to her to, to get her, her viewpoints. And as I was interviewing Alyssa, she shared a story that made her realize the importance of building her brand and the impact it had to her safari. A few years ago, she applied for a leadership position. She knew she had all the qualifications for that leadership position. Unfortunately, she didn't get that position. And the feedback was that she didn't have management experience. I'm sure many of you can relate to that story. I know I could. Unfortunately, for a long time, industry leaders believe that some of the reasons why women are not in leadership or board positions are because we lack ambition, we lack confidence, or we're simply not qualified. And when you show your hand up, sometimes you may not get supported. You may not be supported. Sometimes you may even be discouraged and you may not get what you wanted. And this is what happened to Alyssa. And through this experience, she knew she had to find a way to turn a no into an opportunity. Alyssa was invited to speak at a conference where she was speaking right after Karen Elizari's talk. Let's jump into the next one. Uh, we're see we're just speaking right after Karen Elizari's talk. And I remember meeting Karen in 2018 at the Western Canada Information Security Conference in Winnipeg, where she was introduced as the friendly hacker. That was the first time I heard someone being introduced as a friendly hacker. Karen is someone Alyssa always looked up to. And during the interview with Alyssa, she shared with me that she saw Karen was not afraid of introducing herself as a hacker. For a long time, Alyssa didn't introduce herself as a hacker, and I could understand why. In fact, if we look back, when you hear the word hacker, the first thing you know, for many years that used to come to mind is that they are bad. In fact, movies portrayed that as well, where they show someone is hacking the system and in the scene you see, yes, I have access. And you get to see, you know, bad individuals because they want to steal and gain power. That's what you see in the movies, right? And it's important to share that there are two types of hackers, ethical and malicious hackers. And the difference between the two is their intention. Karen's talk inspired her audience why the world needs hackers. 
And to quote from an article where she shared, hackers are hacktivists, oh sorry, hackers and hacktivists help create a better world by exposing vulnerabilities that push the internet to become stronger and healthier. And this inspired Alyssa to embrace his strength as a hacker. Alyssa's passion started from a young age. So I'm going to talk a little bit about how she built her brand and what she's done. So I'll share her story. And so was her, she, her passion started from a young age as she enjoyed exploring and deconstructing technology to learn more about how it works. Her tagline is do better, be better. Her mission is to improve all aspects of security community. And how she built her brand is through speaking engagements. You saw her yesterday and she speaks at so many different um, conferences. As she focused on her why, she began to notice that her brand was opening up opportunities for her. One speaking engagement led to another and her career also progressed. When you hear Alyssa Miller or Karen Elizari's name, it's not about what their title is. It's not about whether they're an introvert or an extrovert, or it's not about what degree or where they studied or their location. What you see is their brand, which is built around their purpose and their passion. So let's take a deeper look at the impact a brand can have. For companies with a strong brand, it means revenues, growth, innovation, competition, change, efficiency, innovation, right? But what is the impact on people? First, you're inspiring your audience. Even if one person gets inspired, this will help you with your overall mission and ultimately making this a better world. Could be a world full of equal opportunities. Think about it. Karen inspired her audience on why the world needs good hackers. There has been a lot of education and awareness in the recent years. And today you can see a shift in movies. They've evolved. They show how hackers are leveraged for good purposes. Right. Second, it opens up opportunities. For Alyssa, as she mentioned, it opened up speaking engagements as she's been a keynote speaker at many conferences. And as you reflect on why your brand is important and you begin to build your brand, it will open up opportunities for you. And as you start seeing these opportunities, remember your why. St you know, focus on your purpose. And as opportunities rise, again, don't forget your purpose and keep it connected to that bigger issue or bigger cause. At the same time, speak up and don't be afraid of the outcome. Life is like a safari. It will be a bumpy ride. There will be many obstacles. For some, it will take five minutes, you know, before you see the animals in the safari. For some, it will take several roads and several paths before you see it. And for some, you might find a different end result. Right? I don't know where this is going to take me, but one thing for sure is that I hope to inspire you to find your purpose and fulfill your mission, but do it in a way where you're not changing your values. Be you and be yourself and stay authentic. This will help you be a voice for your audience, inspire your audience, and be the change. It wasn't easy for Alyssa as she faced many obstacles. It hasn't been easy for me either. And you'll hear several stories of, of the journey we've been through. I know I could have decided to move to another industry, but I didn't. And as you take this opportunity to build your brand, think about the positive impact it will have. And lastly, to highlight the quote from Jeff Bezos, your brand is what people say about you when you're not in the room. None of these women are in the room, and yet we all agree on one thing, which is their brand and their contribution to this industry. 
to make it a better place. Okay, so now we've explained the why. So the next piece, I've explained the why, I've highlighted the impact. Next piece is I'll explain how, and I'll share an example. Let's take a look at these two women, Hillary Clinton and Michelle Obama. Both are first ladies, served at the White House, but both of them have taken different approaches to building their brand. How they built their brand is through connecting to their audiences in their own unique way. Right. As part of Hillary's campaign, I'll give you an example. She used her first name, just like you would call a friend, right? And that's how she connected to her audience. She wanted her audience to see her as that friend. Michelle Obama, she used how she did this or how she connected and how she was building her brand is she used social media to reinvent the role of first lady and appeal to a young audience. You see her rapping in carpool karaoke. She's dancing on the Ellen show. She's showing that she's a mom. Now, both of them didn't ch change who they are. They didn't change their values. You don't need to have a corporate look and you don't need to be the one that presents on stage to be visible, right? You can build your brand through se several various different channels. If you're passionate about research, maybe a blog. Maybe write a book. If you enjoy public speaking, CFPs like at this conference. If you enjoy video editing, social media, leverage social media. At work, it can also be through your project, right? Like the two scientists or a work task. Think of it. Think of ways on how you can share your passion and accomplish your purpose through various channels. So let me give you examples of three women in our industry who I've been watching over the last 12 months. You may or may not know who they are, but I'll tell you one thing is they've been building their brand and they're making an impact and bringing a positive change to our industry. So the first one is confidence. Through LinkedIn, actually, that's how I connected. Confidence and I connected with each other. Confidence is the founder of CyberSafe Foundation and she founded No Go Fall MAGA. It was through her work here where I saw her purpose to help the most vulnerable people and businesses be cyber aware and stay secure. Confidence shared that her passion is to help people securely leverage technology in their business in their businesses and personal lives. She's educating them about cyber hygiene best practices and by training their employees to increase technical capacity to defend their organizations. She's educating her audience in a way that has never been done before. She realized that she was great at breaking down cybersecurity best practices and taking complex cybersecurity concepts and communicating in a jargon-free and fun way. So she decided to take things a notch higher by regularly creating content to teach these cyber best practices through a music video. This has had a huge impact on her personal brand and created top of mind awareness in the minds of her target audiences. And through this, she has had multiple paid speaking engagements. It's made partnerships easier, more easier to secure, but more importantly, her followers are increasingly becoming more cybersecurity conscious. It wasn't easy and a major challenge for confidence was embracing her personality differences. You'll see some of her posts on LinkedIn. She'll refer herself as sissy nerd and you'll see some of her videos. They're phenomenal. They're awesome. And during her safari of experiences, she stayed true to herself. It took sitting in, as, as, as I share, as, you know, um, asked her the question, what did you do? And so she said it took sitting in full awareness of self and relating her unconventional approach to things and realized this was a positive differentiator 
to connect with her audience to get the most impact. If you Google her video, No Go Fall Maga, you'll see how the mu music video there is educating her audience about cyber hygiene. When I asked her how she would like to be known as, when she's not in the room, her answer was the woman who used all the tools in her arsenal to help especially the most vulnerable people protect themselves from cyber attacks. Her tip, her advice to building your brand is to learn how to speak social media fluently and think of it as an enabling platform to attain your goals. Share about the work you're doing frequently, network with like minds and genuinely seek to add value to yourself and the world. Discover who you are and your cheat sheet could be feedback and leverage your strengths. The second individual that I'd like to highlight, Farah, Farah Hawa. I met her a year ago and I actually met, mentor her as well. Farah studied communication and media studies. She wanted to learn coding and maybe become a software developer. However, cybersecurity and hacking was really intriguing and she realized that it is a niche which is extremely unexplored and therefore that's what led her to join the industry. Due to her degree in media, her passion was creating valuable content for others. Since she came from a non-technical background, and I know I do a lot of talks on there is no cybersecurity shortage, there are many individuals I've talked to that don't have a technical background. So one of the things for her when she joined the industry, she found it really difficult initially to understand super technical blogs or write-ups about hacking as they were full of technical jargon. She knew that she was, not the, she was not the only person facing this problem, so she decided to create a YouTube channel where she would try to simplify the most technical bugs and make it digestible for everyone. That itself became her brand, and her purpose is to help her audience to turn to her channel so they don't have to spend hours trying to understand a complex bug. Farah shared that it takes a lot to push yourself out there. I agree. And be able to entertain or educate people. When she began, it took her a while to figure out what direction to take and had to make some conscious decisions to give up certain content, ideas, which would not fit her vibe. Through her brand, she was offered a position as an application security engineer. And I've seen so many individuals who don't have a technical background or technical certs and things like that, unable to get a job in this industry. And she shared that she broke that barrier through her brand. It wasn't a concern about not having all the uh, certifications and she got this job offer. Farah's advice is to identify a struggle or a pain point that you have faced in the industry. You may not realize it, but a lot of people are most likely facing the same issue. I know when I started to stand out to lead, to get more women on corporate boards, that's why I did it, because I talked to other women in my network. So try to fill that gap by bringing and creating value to solve that problem. When I asked her the same question of how she would like her audience to remember her as, and she said she would like everyone to know her as a hacker who tries to make super technical hacking techniques much more accessible through her YouTube channel. And as you can see, she's got 27,000 subscribers following her. And they're all, she's inspiring her audience through her YouTube channel. Lastly, I am from Vancouver, so I want to highlight local talent here in Vancouver, Canada. I'd like to share Selena Safari. Like Farah, Selena also had a non-technical background. She was actually the HR manager at a large organization, and she moved from HR to cybersecurity, where she was part of the SOC team. 
Her advice is to find a mentor or role models that you look up to. She dedicated time with her mentor that helped her build her brand internally. Her mentor actually was a sponsor because when I first got to know Selena, it was actually through her mentor. And her purpose is to bring in more diversity into the field by sharing her story to kids through volunteering opportunities with Isaka Vancouver She Leads Tech. She's passionate about teaching others to understand the importance of cybersecurity and what they are potentially exposing themselves to from both a work and a personal perspective. Not coming from an IT background, she always felt as if she were an imposter and was never good enough. She thought that others would see right through her. Gender also played a role in that. People would tend to question her thoughts and advice more than her male counterparts. And that's what she was sharing with me as I chatted with her. Over time, she's built up knowledge and confidence to battle these two hurdles. She wants the followers to remember her as someone who is genuine, easy to talk to, and willing to help. So as you can see, there's so many different ways on how you can build your brand. And earlier, as I shared with you, that Google form with the little exercise, right? Removing time constraint as a barrier. It's a friendly reminder for everyone regarding the four questions in that form to submit the Google form for the exercise. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's a starting point. And of course, I want to send the lucky winner swag, right? The last section of my talk is what? What you can do to build your brand through five simple tips. There's a lot more tips, as you heard from everyone uh, that I shared earlier. But I've condensed it into five. I've summarized into five tips. The first one, tip number one. In the exercise, I started off with think about your why. Think about your purpose. Connect with your audience through your passion, but focus on your purpose. Your purpose should not be about getting that promotion. Focus on how you can solve a problem. Inspire your audience to make an impact that will make this a better place. The opportunities will follow you. Tip number two, promote. So promote not only yourself, but promote others. Today I'm promoting these individuals because we're all contributing to make this a better industry. As I shared earlier, you don't need to be a public speaker or that extrovert to be able to promote your brand. There are many platforms such as blogs, books, videos, research, social media, project work, volunteering. Many individuals fear bragging or self-promotion because of imposter syndrome or humility. For me, what helped me with imposter syndrome is to always bring it back and remember that why. Remember why I'm doing this. And think about the change you will bring to make this a better place. A great quote I'd like to share from RBG that I'd like to quote is, fight for the things you care about, but do it in a way that it will matter. Similarly, when you think about self-promoting or bragging, do it in a way that it will matter. Don't be afraid. The first time will feel weird, it will feel awkward. But as you continue, you'll notice that it isn't viewed as bragging. People will start knowing you for your contribution. Tip number three, be authentic. Don't change who you are. Keep your values, stay true to who you are. Your uniqueness is your strength. You heard from the stories earlier on. A great comment from Elisa that she had shared when I was chatting to her and interviewing her is find your weird, hence the picture. Find what makes you unique and be yourself. Don't feel that you have to look and be like someone else in order to build your brand. 
Tip number four. This is a very important one that I saw as a barrier for so many. Dedicate time to invest in yourself. Don't let time constraints get in the way of investing in yourself. You'll be surprised how much you can accomplish when you dedicate 15 minutes a week for self-development. Dedicate time to build your network so that, so that you can inspire your audience. It doesn't have to be a large uh, network, right? As I said, even one that you inspire, right? You've seen how each one of us are leveraging different channels to reach our audience, from speaking engagements to being an author, from creative educational songs, music video, to YouTube channels. Building your network doesn't have to be networking after hours at a bar with small talk. I heard a talk earlier on where one of the speakers said, that's not her thing. So building your network doesn't have to be that. The pandemic has actually helped us think creatively on how to network and connect. It could be through creating a Slack group within the organization with a fun element, like a scavenger hunt, or something that you like, for example, pets. There's one Slack group that was created on pets. I joined it and executives and different people, uh, we're all sharing our pets, but indirectly, that's actually a form of networking. We're getting to know people who we don't know with something common. Hey, I could talk about my pet all day long. So we could be scheduling a 15, the other thing is it could be scheduling 15 minutes virtual meetup with somebody, you know, in LinkedIn, for example. Maybe you've been watching their LinkedIn, you like their posts, you know, connect with them, reach out to them. That's what I did with Alyssa for this interview. Another great way to build your network is through volunteering opportunities. Some of the speakers talked about that. For example, I saw the conference uh, in October for the Diana Initiative is looking for volunteers. That is another great way to build your network. Get involved at local cybersecurity groups. If there isn't a local cybersecurity group or a local group, create one. That's what I did with she. That's what I did with some of the other ones that I created. You'll be surprised how many people will jump at it, right? Tip number five, find a mentor and a sponsor. A lot of talks have, uh, and speakers have talked a lot about this. Dedicate that time with them. A sponsor is someone who is talking about you when you're not in the room. I actually conducted a survey as I was curious why everyone doesn't have a mentor or a sponsor. And the results, I'll share uh, the results of my survey. I don't have the screenshot, but just to share some of the numbers, 25% of the respondents said they do not have enough time in the day. It's a time constraint, right? And 25% said they weren't sure how to approach someone. If you heard yesterday's uh, closing keynote, the speaker shared ways on how you can find a sponsor or find the right mentor. There are many security chapters like ISACA um, or your own organization that will be offering a mentoring program. Last year, in my own personal journey, last year I was submitting so many CFPs and I was working on building my brand. And some were getting accepted, others were not getting accepted. I was actually looking for a mentor who could guide me in speaking engagements, in, in, in getting my talks accepted, right? And the idea was not about getting my talks accepted, but it was more about the learning side to it, right? Because this is something new that I was doing last year. And it was perfect timing. It was more just a learning opportunity. What could I do? What am I missing? What do I not know? And the Diana Initiative Conference offered a mentorship program for speakers. I raised my hand, I took advantage of it right away. For me, it wasn't, like I said, it wasn't about my talk getting accepted. It was a lot more. I learned so much about abstract writing from my mentors. And I can tell you that the sessions were so valuable. 
I'll also share, as I was building my brand, you know, just this mentoring sessions that I was getting from, from my mentors and sponsors really made a great impact, right? So I'll share another story of how I found my sponsor. I would speak at town hall within the organization to educate and ra raise awareness of the importance of uh, DEI in the workplace through she. And one of the executives had asked me if I'd be willing to mentor him. Now, this is a process called reverse mentoring where an executive uh, is reaching out uh, to be mentored, right? I was his mentor and he actually became my sponsor. And for leaders out there, I highly recommend trying this out. For him, what he gained was he was able to see things through my lens. And I was able to see things through his lens. Right? My second sp sponsor that I found, I didn't even know he was my sponsor. As, a, as, as I mentioned, as the founder of She, I presented to the board. I had never formally been introduced to any of the board members prior. There was one of the board members that I found out through our chief people officer that he was actually championing my initiative to his network. So I reached out to him to thank him. And now I'm actually dedicating time with my sponsors as we meet every, you know, meet for an hour every two months. What you put in is what you're going to get out of it. As the sponsor will be helping you out with without you making the ask. A mentor won't tell you what to do, but they'll help you see things differently. Okay, at the start, at the start of this talk, I asked for your participation and I added an incentive. If you haven't already submitted, I can see already a few that have already submitted. So thank you for your participation. Um, please do so now, um, fill in the form so that I can select a prize winner. You will receive an email from me uh, where I'll be asking you for your mailing address and that's where I'll send you the book and um, the t-shirt. So to conclude this talk with the why, how and what, my hope is to inspire everyone to focus on your purpose through your passion. Think of how you can connect to that purpose I shared the five tips, and when you do that, opportunities will arise as a result of building your brand, and you will notice the impact as a result of building your brand. As I bring this back, as I bring this back to my purpose, which is to be, to be the change and make an impact to close the gap for underrepresented groups in STEM and leadership, I'd like to share my quote. Gender diversity should not be a woman's problem to solve or an HR issue to handle. Shouldn't be a legislation to, to be implemented or a movement to occur. It should be everybody's problem to solve. And I like sharing this because this is where we are all here, whether it's at this conference or uh, wh where, whatever your background is, we're all here to solve this problem. So I'd like to thank Alyssa, I'd like to thank Karen, Confidence, Farah, Selena for sharing their journey and to the amazing mentors, Chris Rock and Dr. Meg Layton. Lastly, a big shout out to the organizers and volunteers for this conference. Thank you to you, the audience, for joining me today. With that, shukriya, asante sana, merci beaucoup, arigato gozaimasu, and thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm at a loss for words. <laughs> that was such an amazing talk um so inspirational um I, i'm i'm looking to see if there are questions but i would like to say i just posted the link for the speaker slash session survey please everyone take a, a minute or two fill out the survey um as a speaker myself we value this input we like to know if we're doing a good job if you're getting what you want from these talks. And so often people don't take the time to fill out the surveys, especially 
filling them out in a positive way. Sure, people take the time to fill them out if there's something negative, but please take the time to fill something out. Um, I'm sure Artie will really appreciate that and hear what an amazing job she did, besides us telling in comments and everything else. Um, we have a few minutes. Do we have any questions? And as you bring that out, uh, the lucky draw winner, I just oh. randomly selected this, is Mary. So Mary, you'll be receiving an email. Uh, I'm. Thank you. I've seen so many responses. So thank you for filling this out. Um, so Mary, you'll receive an email from me um, by Monday. Very cool. Very cool. Congratulations, Mary. Um, okay, let's see. We just have many more congratulations on a great talk. Really, it was. Um, I, I'm. I. I wish I had a brand. I. I want to figure out how to do one. As I posted in the comments, I'm. I'm known for dancing flamingos. There so, we go. <laughs> so I, I do have to say, well, there is Sasha. She's my dancing flamingo. Do 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 do. So yes, now you've all seen my brand. Okay. <laughs> But seriously, no. Um, and will you be sh sharing the slides at all? Yes, uh, recording slides are all good from my side. Okay. Any other questions? Reach out to me. I'll, I'll put it on the chat. Reach out to my uh, to me on LinkedIn. I'm happy to connect. Answer any other questions that uh, you have. Fabulous job. We're coming to the end, almost not quite there, of the Diana Initiative's second day. Please, everybody stick around. Um, the closing keynote is coming up in just a few more minutes. Again, one more thank you to Artie. What just an amazing job. Um, so, you know, talks like this can sometimes just be, and I'll be honest, a little dry and boring. But no, I, I was following along the entire time and taking notes and going, God, this is just all so good. So thank you again and have a great rest of your day and enjoy the closing keynote, everyone. Thank you. Bye, everyone.